So tonight, in a story exclusive, Congressman Matt Gates in his first national television interview since the tweet that set off a firestorm ahead of the Michael Cohen hearing. Here is the tweet. It is now deleted, which led to an investigation by the Florida Bar Association and may lead to a House ethics inquiry as well. Hey, Michael Cohen, do your wife and father-in-law know about your girlfriends? Maybe tonight would be a good time for a chat. I wonder if she'll remain faithful when you're in prison. She's about to learn a lot. Here on the story, the former chair of the House Oversight Committee said this about Gates' tweet about Cohen when asked if that was a mistake. It was more than an error. It's indefensible. Um, it's not persuasive. You know, the president has a lot of really provocative allies like Matt. He could stand to have a few more persuasive allies, people like John Ratcliffe, Elise Stefanik, people who can actually make the case. But threatening a witness, um, and I'm going to leave the criminality to others, but threatening a witness like that in a tweet, you're, you're not helping the person you're trying to help. You actually look guilty as hell when you do things like that. So I'm glad he put, took it down, but he never should have put it up. Strong words from Trey Gowdy and Congressman Gates will respond to that in moments. But first, Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel with the backstory tonight. Mike? Martha, good evening. First, it was that controversial tweet, and then Congressman Matt Gates continued his attack on the House floor. I guess tomorrow we will find out if there is anyone that Michael Cohen hasn't lied to. Does he lie to his own family? Does he lie to his financiers? Do we, does he lie to his financiers who are members of his family? The congressman did not stop there. The attack continued in an interview with Fox. We have got to find out who Michael Cohen lies to and if there's anyone Michael Cohen tells the truth to. He lied to the IRS. He lied to three different banks. He lied to Congress, and now he's going to jail for lying. My objective is to figure out whether or not he lied to the people closest to him, and I think that says a lot about his veracity and his character. Hours later, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi fired a warning shot on Twitter, writing, I encourage all members to be mindful that comments made on social media or in the press can adversely affect the ability of House committees to obtain the truthful and complete information necessary to fulfill their duties. Then late night, Gates apologized. Speaker, I want to get to the truth, too. While it is important to create context around the testimony of liars like Michael Cohen, it was not my intent to threaten, as some believe I did. I'm deleting the tweet, and I should have chosen words that better show my intent. I'm sorry. Gates faced bipartisan criticism from fellow lawmakers. It's wrong, and I think it's disgusting. I'm glad he, I'm glad he apologized. But uh, you know, in addition to just being appalled uh, at what looks like a blatant effort to intimidate this witness. Despite the apology, the very public attack could lead to more headaches for Congressman Gates. Martha? Mike, thank you very much. So joining me now exclusively to answer some of these questions is Congressman Matt Gates. Congressman, thank you for being here tonight uh, to, to face some of this criticism. Uh, we thank you for coming in. So let, let's start with the tweet itself. What was your motivation? What did you hope to accomplish by tweeting that about Michael Cohen and girlfriends and his wife and his father-in-law? Well, I think the clips you've showed from my statements on the floor and in other interviews reflected the context, but that doesn't excuse what I did that was wrong, and that's invoking someone's family. And so I want to say publicly what I've said privately to Michael Cohen and to his family that I'm sorry if it is entirely appropriate to test the truthfulness of a witness, but that could have been done in a way that didn't invoke someone's family, and I shouldn't have done it. What, did you have, what information did you have that caused you to write that tweet? Did you, do you know something uh, about yeah. him that, that other people don't know? I mean, obviously, you know, he's, he's had his credibility issues. There's no doubt about it. But, but why, why the girlfriends? I mean, did, did you, was that your idea? Or, you know, some people have even suggested that President Trump wanted you to write all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, to get into all of that would to would be to continue to reference someone's family, and I'm just not going to okay. go there, Martha. But you are, but you are right that uh, Isaac Dover of the Atlantic reported that I was on the phone outside the Longworth office build, building talking to President Trump, and someone did at that time overhear me say the words, "I was happy to do it for you." 
and you just keep killing it. Right. The problem, Martha, is I wasn't talking to Donald Trump. At 8.37 p.m., I, was, I got a phone call from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis and I spoke for 13 minutes, and he was calling to thank me, not about Michael Cohen or payoffs to porn stars, but because I had made a recommendation to him for someone to serve on the Orlando Airport Board, a friend of mine named Randall Hunt. And uh, uh, Governor DeSantis said, well, you know, I appreciate you doing that for me. I said, hey, Governor, I was happy to do it for you. You just keep killing it. And what's crazy is that even though Governor DeSantis told the Atlantic that he and I were on the phone, that we had that discussion, they still haven't uh, issued a retraction or taken down their allegation. And it continues to be repeated across the mainstream media, in the Washington Examiner, in the Miami Herald. And so, look, what I made a mistake. I should not have invoked someone's fa family. And I'm here to take responsibility and to say that I'm sorry. But when the media goes after President Trump, when they tell lies about me, about when they repeat the lies that Jesse Smollett to showed, like it really enrages a lot of forgotten men and women in this country who are tired of the media's all out attack in the absence of facts. And we saw that again today. So I hope that Isaac Dover in the Atlantic will retract something that Governor DeSantis has already told them was false. So you have proof that that phone call at that time was between you and, and Governor yes. DeSantis of Florida. So then we would They're expect that there should be a retraction. That. They, we would expect there that be. there should be a retraction. And we'll see if you get it. Did you ever, did, did, at any time, did the president ever, you know, encourage you to, to you know, that he was out of the country? And obviously the White no. House has said that they were very unhappy that that hearing happened simultaneous, simultaneously with the North Korea meeting. Um, did he ever encourage you to, to mix it up a little bit on the Michael Cohen issue or to show up at the oversight hearing, which you also tried to do? Absolutely not. I spoke to the president before he left for Hanoi. We talked about completely unrelated matters, and I never spoke to the president when he was in Vietnam or the way back. Now, I'm not going to get in the business of talking to the media about every time I chat with my friend the president or every time we discuss advice or an issue before the country, but I certainly could tell you that there is false reporting about me. There is, there is no proof. Like, we live in a world now, Martha, where the media can report something that I was on the phone with the president. They can have no source, no witness, no mm -hmm. identifiable person and then in the echo chamber of the media they just continue to report it despite the fact that it is a lie it did not happen and we ought to have better journalistic integrity than that all right let, let's talk about the investigations because I, I know that you you know you took down the tweet you apologized for it. you spoke to Michael Cohen about it correct mm -hmm. I did and what was that conversation like I, look, I felt uh, that in addition to apologizing publicly for my, invoking Michael Cohen's family, that I needed to apologize to him personally. And so I reached out to him. I told him I was sorry. He sent back a very gracious message to me. And I am, am grateful that he accepted my apology in the spirit that it was intended. In a raucous political discourse and in investigations, we can disagree about substance. We can look for ways to expose uh, inconsistent statements. But we can do that with it without invoking family. And look, Martha, the reason your network has me on a lot is because I'm one of the leading voices defending the president. This was an error on my part, but my errors are not errors of omission. They're errors of commission, where I do a little too much, fight a little too hard, and this time I cross the line, and I hope that it's a better sign of valor that I'm willing to admit that. Well, you know, I, I think everybody can can appreciate that. Um, and I think it's right that you reached out to Michael Cohen. It doesn't really matter what I think about it. But, you know, I think that, that you know, and most people would say that that's the right thing to do. What about the Florida Bar Association? Uh, they say that if the rules were violated, because obviously you are well aware of the rules of in witness intimidation and how it works in the law, um, they say they will vigorously pursue discipline against you if their investigation shows that you were trying to intimidate a witness. I have not heard from the Florida Bar. If I do, I will respond. But I think it's a real problem for state bar associations to be second-guessing the legislative conduct of members of Congress. I mean, like, when Kamala Harris was saying terrible things about Brett Kavanaugh, both inside and outside the halls of Congress, like, should the California bar investigate her for conduct that brings disfavor or puts the profession of, of the practice of law in a, in a bad light? They didn't do that. They shouldn't do that. And so, look, I'll deal with the Florida bar if they, if they uh, send me a notification. But, like, just the fact that they are responding to to allegations against me doesn't mean that there's any violation of the rules. Well, if we'll any person it. makes any 
makes any allegation, they're obligated to, to look into it. And the House Ethics Committee is also considering looking into it as well. Um, but we appreciate you coming here and answering the questions tonight, yeah. Congressman Gates. Yeah, the House Ethics Committee, they've got a bad record of sort of going after a lot of the president's defenders. They opened up an investigation into Devin Nunes. That turned out to be bogus charges. They've opened an investigation into Mark Meadows. That turned out to be something that wasn't his fault. And so it seems as though the people who defend the president most vigorously do spend their time in the barrel at the Ethics Committee. So I guess it's my turn. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman Gates. Good to see you tonight. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, sir.